being in this gym right now, uh, what, what does it bring you back to? Memories, stories, what do you got when you come walking in here all these years later? Well, one thing is uh, when we, the, the one loss we had your senior year, my junior year, this is about how many people we had in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> but the, 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 the hockey team played that night, and, uh, you know, this was a big game. And I think there were like eight people in the crowd. Most of our parents didn't even go to the game. It was just, you know, I just think They're it was the a hockey game. Yeah, the, I think Jefferson <laughs> won in 81 in hockey. Correct. Right? right, and so they were coming off of that. And uh, there just wasn't a lot of interest or respect. But then over the course of the season, clearly that, that built up. But it was, it was kind of a quiet night. No band and no fans. <laughs> you know, and, and what I recall is just, you know, living in Bloomington since 1966, you know, by the time the building opened in 1970, I was going to all the games. And I still remember, you know, in like 76 with uh, Steve Lingenfelter and that crew that won the state tournament. You know, that was before you know, professional sports were here and stuff. I mean, going to a Jefferson game, to me, was like going to an NBA game. These guys were like, they are professional athletes. And I still remember, you know, Steve Lingenfelter, and even before him, Dan Hoffman, yeah. you know, a real big scorer. And they were great memories. This was, I mean, Friday nights coming to a, you know, Bloomington Jefferson basketball game as a kid. That was about as good as it got. So <laughs> it, was, it was pretty, pretty uh, hot ticket to, to come here, huh? Oh, it was fun. Yeah. I think back in those days, yeah. you know, they were getting bigger crowds yeah, I, I than think, we'd ever did. In I think the only, I mean, the, uh, until my senior year when we played Edina here and they pulled out the North Bleachers, the only, the only other times I remember that was when I was a little kid. Jefferson against Richfield, where Richfield was maybe number one in the state, and I think Dreyer was playing or Hoffman and these guys, and they had the North Bleachers pulled out. And the next time that I remember was that, that game against Edina here senior year yeah so yeah those are those are some good fun games to go to how about particular games let's start with 81 82 that that season uh you brought up slim uh, the, the burnsville game right. what do you guys remember from that burnsville that was the one loss that season well uh, you know I, I vividly remember that because obviously it was the only game we lost that year and um i remember them getting you know it was only like a six or eight point lead in the middle of the second quarter. Of course, back then we played quarters and not halves. And they basically went into a four corners offense. And in my opinion, they probably had the best guard in the conference who was uh, a junior named Tom Robeson. And he, you know, he was the Phil Ford out on the court and he was dribbling around. It's like, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. They're gonna yeah. do this for over half the game. And I still think to this day, I, I think they won 36 to 32 maybe. And that was just the most frustrating yeah. game. And, and I remember coming home just so angry. And like an hour later, my dad's like, okay, he's got to cool down by now. And hey, Greg, how are you doing? You want to talk about the game? No, I don't. And I was just, just furious. And I still remember him talking at our uh, uh, awards ceremony, you know, the awards right. banquet at the end of the year. And, and my dad stepping to the mic saying, you know, it was a great season, and, and I'm just so glad they never lost a game because I, I couldn't live with my son if he acted like that again. <laughs> well, how about the, the second Burnsville game, a little sweet? I know that was a yeah. – I was at that game. Right. So what do you guys remember about kind of repaying them? Well, I, the same as Greg said. In my memory is just the only difference in that first game is I think they got a 2 to nothing lead and they went into a stall. I mean, it was just obnoxious. But then that second game at Burnsville, we got the lead. And then they couldn't stall. And I think we were up by probably like six or something for most of the first half. We, we scored a bucket with about 10 seconds left. Somebody stole the ball, hit Johnny, and he hit a buzzer beater right at the end of the first half. So my memory is we had about a 10 point lead at half and it was just game over. You know, cause one, we just had momentum. And then that locker room at Burnsville, if you remember, they were the lot, you could hear Swanhorst screaming at his team and we were over here feeling good because we were up by eight or ten or whatever, and their, their players were done. Just because, you know, one, you have a yeller like Swanhorst, and, uh, and again, we were the better team, but now we didn't have to play this stall game that they were playing in the, in the first game, so that was awesome. And, and, and I remember that as well. I mean, just being kind of a, you know, we had kind of the huge revenge factor with a chip on our shoulder. Like, you know, they stalled the whole game. There is no way they're winning. And, and to this day, I will say, I'm not going to say it's the best game I ever played, but it's as hard as I ever played because it was like we cannot lose to them 
And I still remember having a timeout towards the end of the game, and we always stood up for our timeouts. And I still remember like, you know, coach, can I pull up a chair here? And you know, Coach Evans and your dad talking, just, just sucking wind. I mean, I was like, but you know, it's not like I was going to ask to sit out for a minute. But I, I was just, you know, just exhausted. But it's, what a great feeling! Yeah, yeah, that was a great game. <laughs> All right, let's go into some other stuff. I, I want to, uh, I'm going to throw some stuff at you guys and just kind of, just take it and run with it. Um, the first thing would be, uh, and I, we interviewed somebody earlier this, uh, this afternoon, and we talked about kind of the aura of Jefferson basketball. Um, because from 1975 to 1987, that's 12 years, right? There was seven state tournament uh, appearances, playing in the toughest conference in the state, playing in the toughest section in the state, getting to the state tournament that many times, that's impressive. But four state championships, and uh, I mean, really the dominant program, really th through that stretch of time, let's say 12 years. And I think that kind of built up an aura about Jefferson basketball. Is that your memory? Because you guys are right in the middle of those 12 years, basically. You're 80, you know, 81, 82, 83. So talk about the aura of Jefferson basketball. Well, what I remember vividly is kind of the first day showing up for practice. And, and that was probably more my, you know, junior year when I was part of the varsity squad of Coach Evans saying, and this might even been the sophomore year of just, uh, you know, welcome to Jefferson basketball um, and just flat out saying, if you want to be an average team, you know, you have to win 17 games because our average year has been like 17 and seven or something. So there was a definite uh, just aura of excellence and like, you know, this is a great program, you know, strap your, you know, lace up your shoelace and get ready to work because we're, we're, we're here to compete at the highest level. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, and some of this is maybe seeing things after, now looking back at how we did things. So some of it was knowing at the time there was something special, but I think another was just the way that Jefferson basketball did it. And I think one thing that always kind of hit me was we would usually have four seniors and one junior playing. Not you, but oftentimes. And then you look at some of the other programs and they'd have three sophomores and a junior and a senior. And the next year they'd have the same thing. So those sophomores wouldn't amount to a whole lot. And we would just reload because the, you know, the, the program did it right in terms of keeping the seniors in the program and giving them playing time as seniors. And so then in the end you have a program that you look at you know, after um, your, your junior year you lost everybody. Johnny was the one returning starter. Right. And then all of a sudden we win state the next year with a group that you'd think would be really unseasoned, unproven and all that. And that was just, to me, the reloading. That's a program that does that. And, and again, it, it speaks everything to the coaching staff, but just to the program from traveling basketball on up is that did it right. And I think, you know, today it's just so different in, in high school sports. But that's one thing I look back on and say, you know, it's just so cool that guys on, you know, see your senior classmates, you know, they were all starting as seniors. And the year before, they didn't get a lick of playing time. I mean, you did, but not, you know, Kingery and some of these other guys didn't. And so then the, just a chance to uh, be able to play and experience high school basketball, high school sports, but then winning at the same time. And I just think there was something magical about that. Yeah, just so I, everybody knows, this is Greg Montbrine from 1982, class of 82, and this is Tim Lynch from 1983. Uh, they both played on the state championship team in, in 82. Um, yeah, and just uh, the, the rewarding of seniors. Coach, I, I think you guys took pride in that, I think, and probably Jeff, too. Of, of Obviously, you want your best talent on the floor, but like, like you're saying, Slim, just as far as like rewarding seniors. And right. so, you're, I mean, if you haven't played, you come through the program, you haven't played much until your senior year, and you're a little bit more mature than other teams that are playing sophomores and juniors. That's one thing. But you're also chomping at the bit that this is your last chance to really do something special. You know, absolutely. I'm, I'm really glad you made up that point because I've been involved with just a couple other programs and just from following high school basketball. And it just seems there are, a, you know, a lot of programs are out there who are always trying to build for the, the super team. And, we're always going to kind of be trying to play, you know, as many juniors and sophomores. And if, if it's kind of close in talent, probably go for the younger person thinking a year or two we're going to be dominant. Well, oftentimes those kids do not progress. They're playing at probably a little bit of a higher level. Then you're getting the more mature seniors who are getting disgruntled, you know, 
and it's probably bad for team chemistry and you know maybe some kids in programs don't even end up going out um, but yeah the Jefferson way was always you know unless someone is a clear superstar and head and tails above the other people you know if you're a very solid senior you know you're gonna get you're gonna get your playing time you're gonna get your turn do you think the program was looked at a lot of times but people outside Jefferson or Bloomington as you know the preeminent high school basketball boys program in the state oh I think so I think in those days especially and, and again I think those are different times where it was looked at very differently than you know the challenge that Jeff has today versus uh, coach you know Jack had back in our day it's different but I think absolutely you know it's just you look at that consistency that we had in winning yeah. and then you know clearly I think people would need to look layers underneath it to see how it was being done but just from the outside you clearly could see the the winning and if somebody looked relatively closely you'd see that there's a lot of seniors playing well that says something uh, but again I think there's no there's no doubt it just in those days in the 80s at least you know late 70s and 80s Jefferson basketball uh, was for sure the preeminent program for me in the state as I look back and I think it's amazing how um, you know then Jeff has been able to take that on in, in new times and different times and numbers not working in Jefferson's favor anymore right. in terms of enrollment but still keeping it uh, you know a more than viable program uh, talk about um Kind of, you guys always uh, on your teams, uh, always being prepared, and the importance of practice. Like, what are your memories of practices back in high school and the preparation that the coaches kind of got you ready to play games? You know, I guess, you know, I, we were always fundamentally sound. I mean, you know, our, our class of '82. There was a reason we were underdogs for all three of our state tournament games. You know, we always said, you know, um, your brother John, he was the superstar but he he was just such a great team player he didn't really stand out like a superstar but he was I mean I would put him up with as good of any player in the state but he was just such a well-rounded player that you know he wasn't looking to score 20 points a game he was looking to you know get a lot of assists and get us all involved and I just think there were you know the fundamentals and playing as a team and taking good shots and and putting team before the yeah. individual you know, was one of the things that was, you know, I think kind of ingrained in, in, in even to the time, you know, where you played and were obviously an excellent player. You know, I, I watched a lot of your career. You were always a great team player. So I just think that was kind of the Jefferson way of the team comes first and, you know, the team wins, everyone will get their accolades down the line. No, I, I think that's a great point, just as far as the, you know, kind of back to the winning and, and how Jefferson did it is um, the, the team aspect. You know, the, there's a big reason why you can reload with a bunch of JV players and win the next year because of the, the way that we played the game. And there's, you know, Johnny was one, but there's plenty of others that I think you were another that, well, all, I think any of us could have, could have averaged much higher points per game had we played a more selfish kind of basketball. But, you know, I think to jump ahead a little bit, I know we'll get to 83, but that is the, the biggest difference for me between my junior year and my senior year was the team. We had a team my junior year. I wouldn't trade that experience, you know, losing on a last minute, last minute shot my senior year, all that was painful. But winning with that team my junior year is just, it's, it's one of the, I mean, sports wise, by far, it's the highlight of my life. Um, and then it's, it's, it's a highlight of my life, not just sports wise, but some of that was just the team that we had. And, you know, the next year with Lincoln closing and all of that, we just, you know, we came together. Maybe by the end of the year we were playing a little bit better together, but we weren't a close team at all uh, versus with you guys. It's just what a, what a great experience. Sure, and, and, and I think that was very helpful for us as well as, you know, when we won state in 82, it was all of us have been playing together since like sixth grade. So we were in the Jefferson traveling program and many of us from even like third grade on you know, we all grew up in the same community. We all hung out together. We all had been on teams many, many times together and just playing games at the park, shooting in the driveway. So we became pretty close. And then all of a sudden it's your senior year and you add a couple of excellent players like Tim Lynch and Steve Hill. And it's like, we're pretty good to begin with. Now all of a sudden you get two great players added to your team. You know, that was just, you know, instrumental in putting us over the top. 
Oh, just, right. just real quick, I have yeah, to say, yeah. speaking back of like third and fourth grade, I do have to just <laughs> announce that in the BAA there championship, <laughs> city championship, when I was a fourth grader and, and you guys were fifth graders, uh, we, we, we won the title, Coach Jake against your dad in the championship game, and it was a, it was quite a battle, but uh, I think the Eagles pulled out a victory. You know what, I think I conveniently forgot about that. <laughs> I'm going to blame it on age, okay? <laughs> <laughs> How many of the guys that were on the Jefferson varsity team in '82 were in that game? Because I think I've heard about this. Well, game. I think I think Hill was on one of our teams. Hill was he on, we're on your team, team, and then we had Johnny and me. We beat Von Eschen's team in the semis. So John Von Eschen's team, we, we uh, nipped him in the in the semis. And then I don't know if you guys had others, but for our team, it was just Johnny and me. Hmm, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and you just talked. Here's another one. Commitment to community. I mean, that, that's one thing that a commitment to, to Jefferson kids, winning or losing with Jefferson kids in an era now where there's, you know, certain coaches recruit and kids are moving around, open enrollment, all that stuff. But, you know, Jack and Jeff, they, they would win or lose with Jefferson kids. And just that's, to me, that's high school basketball. Yeah. Do you agree with that? For sure. Well, and I think that makes it special too. I mean, these are these are these are guys you've known, you know, ten, twelve, sometimes even your entire life. So I think that really makes it meaningful too that you went through this whole long, you know, arduous, pro, uh, you know, process with them, and you got to the very top of the mountain, which was, you know, incredibly cool. <laughs> yeah, and I and I think just to add to that, I, if I were building a program, I personally would build a program that would go five hundred and have kids that grow up together, play together, and are rewarded with that and get that high school experience over a team that goes 18 and 0 with kids that none of them played in the Traveling Basketball Association. They all just come together and they win. Now, again, that's if I was starting a program, that would be priority number one, but the fact is we still won. So we did it the right way, but then we were still winning games regional turn, you know, championships and state championships. So it was absolutely the best of both worlds. And there's definitely uh, uh, an expectation of success, right? I mean, you guys have already kind of mentioned that. You know, when you got there, you know, you had gone to the state tournament in 81 with Bratlin and McGowan and those guys. And there had been winning taking place in the 70s too. And that was kind of the expectation was success, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think to what Greg <laughs> talked about earlier too, the fundamentals, you know, to me it's another thing that it, it, I, I would say that we didn't sit around and talk. Coaches didn't talk about winning state titles, but it was a focus on fundamentals and, and focus on scenarios. I just think of practices and scrimmages and those kind of things where it was just, you know, work on those fundamentals and execute them, the results will come. You know, that's a bit of a life lesson too in terms of no matter what you're doing, but I'll, I'll never forget there was our junior, my junior year, we were scrimmaging Chaska. And in that scrimmage, I learned some of this later, but uh, we were playing against Dalkey and Price and some of those guys. Chaska had a really good team. And I think we flipped, to, we, we went to a man-to-man -man or zone, must have been a zone, and they moved Dalkey to the outside, and we immediately went back to a man-to-man. -man because the coaching staff was thinking, if we play these guys again, in the, state we, in the state tournament, which is the only time we would play them, stick this Dalkey 6'6 kid who can jump outside, where he's off of the boards. Yeah. And so don't give them the learning in the scrimmage. And I'm just, who thinks of that? And this was a high school program, so not only were we working on fundamentals, but we had coaches thinking that way, that again, they didn't bring it up with us, but it was just a little change in the scrimmage that says, all right, we're, we're gonna do what it takes to win in addition to doing it right.